our money on the track. <laughs> Look, blast up, running the check up. Uh, keeping my head up on days when I'm fed up. I stay focused. Oh, please don't get it twisted. I'm the dope. dope. I promise I'm the one that you gon' notice. Yeah, I do this for my people locked hey, away and all the peace. ones in the grave. If I work to feed my people, do that make me a yo yo yo. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. You already know what it is, man. It's Plotting Progress Podcast, episode number 27. We got a very, very highly esteemed special guest in the facilities tonight, man. Uh, but yeah, but let me before we do that, you already know, man. Like, subscribe, share the video. I'm gonna kick it off to Brother True. No, 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 no. First, we're gonna do uh, who spit those bars. Yeah, if I can't forget oh, about that. Can't forget about the icebreaker, y'all. Um, we're gonna do who spit those bars. And I believe uh, Kylon got that. So go ahead, set it up, bro. Yes, indeed. Episode 27, y'all. These are the bars. All right. goes like this. Now, I can't pledge allegiance to your flag because I can't find no reconciliation with your past. When there was nothing equal for my people in your math, you forced us in the ghetto and then you took our dads. The belly of the beast. The streets are demons' abs. I'm telling you that sit up in them sit ups is so sad. The system is a slab. Corruption is the swingers sitting high, riding dirty, drag racing into danger. And it's so clean, pine trees smelling good. We're work off in the trunk and niggas in the hood. So I can't shed no blood on any battlefield of yours. I pray the ugly truth comes and shatters your decor. And as it all falls down and tatters on the floor, I shed tears. I don't know what really matters anymore, cause I don't know what really matters anymore. <laughs> y'all got it. that was dope. That was dope. I have no idea who it was, but it was. Ah, uh, got y'all again. Hold up, bro. Huh? Is that chameleon there? Nah, nah, nah. What y'all listening out here, man? What y'all? What are y'all listening? All right, to? we need we need hints, bro. We need hints. All right, Midwest, Midwest, Midwest. Yeezy? Nope. Close. He's collab with Yeezy. Oh, I consequence. Say, I consequence. Close. Not consequence. Nah. I know the song. They got a right, This dude, man, if I give y'all this hint, that's going to give it away. You, you. Twister. Common. Common. Who you, who common. You, who you, who you, Twister. Not common. Twister. All right. Same city. Same city. We in Chicago. We in Is Chicago. It it's not Twister. Ryan Fest. Not Ryan Fest. Wow. Chicago. Chicago, y'all. This was the oh, 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 Lupe. 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 Check, check this out. Check this out. I was going to do a Lupe song today, too. Man, you, you yeah. just, at that point, you just name all the Chicago rappers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know so it's, it's that, song, that song right there is a uh, strange fruition. It's the first song on his album, the one that was all black. The cool. On the cover, it was just black. It, it was called uh, "Food and Liquor 2. Oh, "Food and Liquor 2. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the first song. Um, so yeah, Lupe, that was hard, man. Yeah, 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 that was yeah. Hard, the song is super hard. Yeah, that was hey, Lupe's that dude, I'm, and I'm mad. I ain't Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so we got my man El Sol here. Uh, what I really like about this brother, man, you know, a black man that used to be living in America, who who who's always like just joyful and has a, has a positive spirit man like you can't help but he, he elevates the room wherever he comes in so uh elso welcome to plot man thank y'all for having me man i'm eternally grateful man humbly man i give my time and effort and words to y'all man <laughs> and so this brother he was coming to uh, grassroots and he was making uh, his uh, ex exodus to the the continent and he was asking people like if it if they would go to Africa and if they did, what country they would go to. So just, that's a little bit. Can you tell more about yourself and you know, your, we're gonna get into your YouTube channel and All right. your experience out there. So I'm gonna start with the, um, the knowledge of going to Africa came to me, I wanna say in my later teens, going into adulthood, around the age, I wanna say 18 to 19. And my auntie, she was the first one that ever whipped it on my head. Like you ever thought about going to Africa? And she was, uh, she used to be married to a Moor she uh, messed with the nation of Islam. So there was a lot of things and she was just putting knowledge on my head. And I'm like, you know, never really thought about it because, you know, we black men in America, the ghetto is all that we introduced to. TV is BET. BET is not showing nothing in Africa at that time. Yes, we may see movements. We may see artists, you know, on a conscious level. 
but there's nothing to say pump the thought of africa to this person until Nas and damian marley on that album that they had so it was just a seed that was planted throughout the years i want to say as my trials in america as a black man not understanding love not understanding patience not understanding kindness not understanding unity as i start to get into adulthood man you're gonna get more similar confirmations out your life on your destiny of where you should go and where you should be at so the africa thing kept popping up popping mm, up interesting. i got signed to wu-tang clan through on a management deal type you know the manager signed me when i was 27. right at the time i'm in la it started to hit me even more like hey i think my time is done in america i'm not about to go all the way into this industry i'm at the beginning uh, like an underground level they do got underground level in the music industry so i'm not going all the way up because i already know what it takes to get there and just me the integrity that i have it won't let me do it it can't there's too much of a god essence in me that will not be applying with they demonic strategic ways of getting in there it's just not me so at that end i come to arizona after two years in california man when I, as soon as i came to arizona no more than after a year after i meet my wife we have a daughter on the way my wife was at least seven months pregnant man i go to sleep i have two dreams within the same fruition of an hour i wake up like yo that's crazy go back wake up they they both said go to africa one a lion face came out the mountain and said take you and your family and go and it would be well with you second one showed me on green hills green hills that we don't got over here around a bunch of africans just you know talking being kind changing business ideas a type of joy i never seen myself have over here with my wife and kids at that point my wife she half she half african and half mexican woke up hey yo it's time to go to africa you know i told her when she first met me through the door i don't know if you want to get with me because my end goal in life is to go to africa that's just up like up front in france you know i don't know if you want to talk on her. she said yo where's your passport we could go today <laughs> i said what and she said i was like oh snap i think i found the one <laughs> okay. because if you know for a mind to think of africa and to be content with going there and staying there then that means you have some kind of level of higher love in you and some kind of endurance and destiny that you're trying to embark on for real for real because when we mention africa to people you're going to get three responses oh i'll visit i want to live and it ain't for me so when you meet somebody that says i want to live there know that they have some kind of higher portion in destiny that they trying to embark on and some people don't know that they got that when you know that all your joy is here done your health can't get no better here ain't no better options of for good love peace and you just feel it in your system like dang man i think i hit the brick walls over here it's time to bounce we do have a place the black man and black woman has a place to go to get higher love and higher joy is it perfect nah but the beautiful thing is they looking for us looking to us to build it up america's not looking to us to build it up they don't want it they don't want our hand to build it up why because if we can stay power infrastructure and agenda that they got here and we ain't gonna get into that but we know that it ain't beneficial to the black man you know what I mean America's dream is the black man's nightmare <laughs> point blank period that's facts that's facts man and it's inspirational so I like the fact that what you were saying is like you know what I'm saying like you had those dreams and a lot of people um discredit the meaning that you can have behind dreams you know sometimes it could be some silly shit like in but yeah. sometimes it could be some real shit yeah and when it's the real shit you have to you have to take heed to especially if it's if it's if it's sitting sitting heavy in your spirit you know what i'm saying so i think that's dope man so when you went out there what type of when you decided to go and you was like yo man we saved up the bread we going out there did you did you i mean you said that your queen was from there so did y'all already have connections or did you have to do that groundwork first then go out there crazy man um i hit up a brother that i knew about for about 10 years I ain't talked to him about seven i hit him up on messenger because sometimes i'm like i'm gonna get this brother on messenger i can't find him in my contacts hit him up i'm like bro where you at he said oh i'm in ghana right now i said are you serious he said word 
where he said, word to my mother, man, I'm over here. You know what I mean? I'm in Cape Coast in Passam. He said, in Passam means want no trouble. I'm in the region where they don't want no trouble. It's all peace. I said, what? He said, yeah, the dungeon and no return. I said, yo, 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 I just had a dream. I'm telling him. He's like, oh, then it's meant for you to be here. Come on. It's time. He said, you already seen the Chiefs and them saying sorry on YouTube. I didn't know this. See, I didn't know the Chiefs said sorry to us for selling us into slavery. When I went and seen that, I'm like, yo, let me not deny this gift, this dream that the, came from the most high the creator. You know what I mean? Let me go in here and take this, man. Because maybe my life, everything that I'm supposed to have is in this direction. And once I hit, once we I hit him up, yo, it was just a matter of time. Just like, yo, I'm gonna stack this much. Um, he told me, he said, yo, a lot of people say you gotta have the funds from America to succeed over here. It's not true, man. You just gotta have your gift right, which is your business. Bring it here, and if you say you're gonna live here forever, then go ahead and learn how to make money in the region you're going to. Because that's the that's one of the most deceptional things they tell our people. You need to have a, a source of income coming from America. Mm -hmm. I say maybe for a time. But if you're saying you're going to live here for 20 years, come on now. Mm -hmm. Like, predominantly, if your business ain't doing, you know, import and trading in, you know, into other countries and your business don't include America, because we know already know this dollar is getting de dollarized. So he, right, told me, right. come he told me, come over here. He said, you know, focus on making uh, money in the region. He said, I don't want you to be like other Americans and trying to make the income outside of America and it don't work. He said, because you right here with the locals, you right here in Ghana, make the money in this system. I said, You're right. And that's what we did, man. And I focused on my YouTube. I actually went a little hard. Only made, I was only able to make five episodes when I was there within the course of a year time because I ended up hooking up with a brother named KH2. And he's like, yo, I like how you do YouTube. I like your energy. Can you help me shoot my movie? I'm going to give you 50,000 CDs. 50,000 to us. I think that uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, I think that's like 10,000. No, no, no. I think it's 5,000. 5,000. <laughs> it's a lot. That's, still, that's a lot over there. 50,000 is a lot. You good. Good, 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 good. For like three years if you do it right. I mean, that's what I did. And when we got there, um, I booked the ticket. I went to Royal Air Morocco. That was my first introduction to Africa. Even though it's more of an Arabic, Arabian, Persian influence, they still show the love of Africans. <laughs> Just a different shade. They was, it changed my mind right then and there. I had a long layover, long layover, like 20 hours. The woman in Morocco said, because you have a long layover, let me get your visa stamped. I mean, your passport stamped. And she said, we're going to give you the best in Morocco. Take them to a five-star hotel where all you can eat. Free, 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 man. And one thing I kept myself in tune with was the instructions that I was searching when I, before I came to Africa. And I called many different countries for consultation. Because, you know, you got YouTubers. Everybody's a YouTuber in Africa. So you could call these people for consultation. Everybody's giving out consultation. I try to seek out the most trustworthy ones. The ones that's good in, that can tell you about the poverty area, the poor area, the rich area. They can tell you all about it because they're there for Africa in whole. Not for the one that's looking for America in Africa. It doesn't make sense. Because a lot of people go over there and do that and they make their mistake. Mm -hmm. So when I hit, when I was hitting them up, the first thing, the most thing that they kept telling me, man, come here and be a student for a little bit. Be the student first. Learn, man. Learn. That's how you get your respect of your people over there. That's how they that's how the foreigner perception goes away. Mm. Being loving. What's, what's, what's the biggest? What, what do you think the biggest difference is between like us and here and and them there? I love this question, man. It's easy. We got the economical advantage, funds, but we can't just own our house. Even when you buy a house, there's an illusion. You you miss that mortgage payment. Banks still could take your home. Over there, you buy your house. That's yours forever. They give you two hundred. They give you a two hundred year uh, lease. Uh, I think it's two hundred years. You can own this. Then you can repurchase it if you want to. If you want to. It's two hundred years here. No, it's not like that. You actually own it over there. You own it. Ain't no credit system. No debit system. No loan system. You own. We don't. The illusion is you own. No, we don't own nothing. We don't own the music industry. BT ain't even owned by a black man. 
So like the illusion is we don't own these things. But over there in their music industry, it's owned by a black man. They bank by a black man. You see businesses everywhere. They own it. They just don't have the economical advantages to go as far as we do with our imagination for our businesses over here. You know, but when we take our funds over there and do it, and it's not that many things that's prohibiting us, that's propelling going forward, man, the possibilities are endless if you have a, a, a righteous heart and a determined mind over there. Oh, right now, we got the yo, YouTube page up, uh, Blissfully Executed Exodus. What made you decide to start this page? And Because, um, like, like I said, you started here and you were ask, asking people about going to Africa and grassroots. What made you decide to start that at Chronicles? Oh, uh, man. What made me start it here, man, you do want to be uh, transparent and authentic. And you, you, if you if you if you ever doing anything where everybody got social media, so you making your life an open book. Why not? Mm-hmm. Like, let's feed the people. Right. So I want to make my life an open book, show you how you can journey here, show you my journey, what I'm learning, where I'm going, this, that and the third. If you, if you if you do that, you get people uh, a feeling like, hey, you know what you're talking about. They see you more with the locals. They know what you're talking about. I stayed amongst the locals. I was going to get into the lavish things later. But first, let me give people the uh, the real reality. Not It wasn't poor. No. Talk about this. Yeah. So where I stayed at was also Cape Coast in Paso. And and, and when I say um, there's, 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 and I, I want to just get this out there. There's the tribal life where you literally living off the land, off grid. And then they got middle class. They actually have a sustainable middle class. Mm-hmm. If you are middle class, most likely you are between the locos and the big city. Point blank period. It depends. And now if you're in Accra, that's just big city. But you're still with more of the locals. If you are living lavish, that means you really ducked off. you got a mansion. Nobody really knows where you're at. You might be in East Lagan. One of the real rich parts of Accra, somewhere high in Ashanti. I chose to stay in middle class. Man, I want to be off grid, but still nowhere have the access to the city. Period. Because I do need to learn these tribes, these locals. I need to learn about the chief, the history. With me doing that, I found out, dang, Ghana's a baby. They only had what they call their independence for 50 years. Oh. So when people complain like they don't know what they're doing with their money, this and this, America's been its own country for a long time, more than a you know, more than a honey bun. So they kind of know what to do, what the this, the is and outs. When I was also amongst the people in the region I was living in, which I call for me, it was spiritually lit, uh spiritually, I said lit and rich. I was able, man, to actually have the locals get a proper assessment of me. When I say that, they watch you. Mm-hmm. Africans watch. They don't just come to you and just like, oh, just no. They watch you for a little bit. Then they'll come to you and say, I watched you for a little bit. You are a good man. Humble. I can trust my children around you. Jeez. That's crazy. You know what I mean? I'm going to the market. They're telling me they watch me. You are different than most of the foreigners. You have a respect for us. That, that's all they be really wanting is respect us because we respect you coming home. They respect you. They really do. Once you make it out the airport and them trying to scam you, because they're going to try to scam you when you get in the airport. They see that blue passport. We know you got some money. You came from America. Mm-hmm. You know, go ahead, offer me up something. They gonna you, If you got technology in your cart, they see cameras, they see this, that, laptops. Could you give it to me as a gift? <laughs> like, brother, you crazy. I just slaved my back in America. That the thing that we gotta help them understand that this ain't a place where free, like where, that's freedom. No, you work over here and you work hard. The way they work over there, they don't work as hard as us. They work eight hours, it's done, and they can work at a relaxed pace. They allowed to sleep on the job. They no for real, they allowed to actually go to sleep. You'll be at a grocery store, you walk up, they like <laughs> you get there, they wake up. Sure, sure, sure. Just stay your stuff and we rig it up. <laughs> Over here, sleep on the job if you want to. Your job over. Mm-hmm. Eight hours, eight hours ain't the mandatory over here. It's 12, <clears throat> slowly going to 14. Some jobs is 16. So those stuff that we break our back for, but you just gotta let them know. America's not the land that you think it is. First off, you you a black man too. They gonna you're gonna get the same treatment that we get when you get over there. 
because a lot of them, if you meet, if you talk to some of them, when you just talk to some of them, they'd be like, man, I stress out over here. I feel alone. Mm. It doesn't feel like home. Mm. And now my family think I'm rich, but I'm not. See, they, <laughs> they got caught up in this perception. Because when you talk to them over there that ain't been over here, they be like, oh, everybody from California, right? They think America's California or New York. Like, no, everybody's not living Beverly Hills. Everybody's not this lavish rapper you see. There is poor. They don't think it's poor over here. Mm. They think it's crime over here. America's media is very good at painting the perception of perfectness. Well, same thing like they painted the uh, picture of what we thought they were. You know, flies and the babies with the flies on their face. And yeah. 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 Feed the children shits and, and, and like, motherfuckers yeah. doing dry bars, blowing blowing darts at you and shit it, like that. It, so, you know what I mean? Like that. They get yeah, it. it went both ways. Man. Yo, Kylon, what you got, brother? Yeah, I was going to ask the brother um, what centered his decision on Ghana, but then he kind of answered it. He spoke to a previous relationship that he had established, and I imagine that was somewhat of a bridge for you to um, yeah. pick Ghana, or I don't know if you were just kind of decided on that. Um, maybe speak to that, and and have you spent time in any of the other nations? Uh, so, uh, on the I did. Like, um, I let my brother True know this. Uh, I hit up consultation for Gambia, Tanzania, Kenya, Sierra Leone. I hit up conversation. Uh, uh consultation for congo uh zimbabwe nimbia south africa like i'm spending a hundred dollars every week mm-hmm. consultation i need an hour i need an hour from you you know after i got the assessment um my heart centered on ghana because it's like it's the beginner place for africa for me I really say that for everybody. If you want a beginner start with you get in, you get more peace or let's say your endeavors, the endeavors that you want to take. Um, I say go to Ghana first. Ghana's the most peaceful. Peaceful. Tanzania and all these other places, they had their things. And I'm not saying that, oh, they're not uh as peaceful as Ghana. Nah. After just hearing all the conversations, I sent them back to my home. He said, I'm on my way. Yeah, yeah, they have Congo and uh, there's it's some made heavy shit going down over there right Ooh. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in Kenya as well, and Ethiopia. Ethiopia has and a tribal Senegal, war going on. Senegal, over there. South Africa. Yeah, Senegal. Yes, th- there's stuff that goes on, you know. And but I had to also learn that this media be lying when they actually are YouTube. They have agents over there now, and this that's this really does need to be talked about. That is over there to pump false information to scare you from coming over there to pit the demonized image that oh i got i got scammed and it was like this and the animals and the insects and there's they don't trust us there is people over there meant to pit that that's way to pro movement is still you know you know what's fucked up about that though bro is uh they 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 brought us here right they kidnapped us brought us here um whole time we here they screaming Go back to Africa. Yeah. Go back to Africa. And now they got shit over there. Now they don't want us to go back. They don't want you to go back because they, they realize crazy, they get a benefit. You take all the musicians away. Most of the uh scripts that are for Hollywood that they don't uh put in the black man's name came from a black man, but they just changed it. They just changed it. They paid the person off and you put it in the contract, say, Hey, you know, we ain't gonna say your name. It's for me. We know you wrote it, but it's for me. We take all we we take the entertainment. We take the smart, we take we take everything. We go if we go, this this system falls. Yeah, hey, and I think it's, al- it's also <laughs> worth mentioning that the future of the global economy is centered on Africa. It's Africa. You know, Africa has the youngest demographic in the world, mm-hmm. and all paths are kind of leading back to Africa. Obviously, for the resources and things of mm-hmm. that nature, but also for a lot of these uh, global corporate entities. Oh yeah. Though there's so many untapped markets that they have their eyes on there. So they're looking to further their uh, colonialism in a sense. I want to and capture those eyes and, 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 you know, those, uh, those economies over there. And uh, man, I forgot the the individual's name, but I don't know if 
if y'all remember True and Crondo, but we had one of the weekly calls that we do. And I shared a clip of an individual. Um, I believe he founded Blackwater, the mercenary group. Well, he was ta- he was openly basically talking about how we need to. And when he said we, I mean, you can imagine who he means, but he's like, we need to call it recolonize Africa. He's openly saying this with yeah. enthusiasm. So yeah. that's a, a, another testament of, you know, what their intentions are moving forward in the future. I'm going to turn it back over to you, bro. And, and, and like, and, uh, like I was saying, when, when you first showed that clip, they ain't, they ain't just going to sit down and take that. So let's get into Burkina Faso. Oh. What's going on in Kenya? If you could speak to some of that in, in that young warrior that's out there, just yeah. kicking out France and all that uh, shit. Yeah, let me say this. So, okay, <laughs> let's get into Burkina Faso, right? About a year ago, Ibrahim Traori. Mm. And, I, and I do want y'all to look this up. Look up all the things that he's saying and doing, right? So this guy staged a coup in his, um, in his country and took out his president because the president, we all know, Africa has a lot of crooked presidents that they get uh, most of their resources and the funds and they, get, they keep uh, 90% of it, only give 10% to the citizens. He said, no, no, no. How can you do that? And you're in a, and you're in a royal standing, in a position where there's a lot of poverty in areas that can be fixed with these funds. Is able to do it. He said, it's not that hard. We have all the agriculture. We have all the resources. So um, there's, a, there's a spirit in Africa. And, th- and, this is, and this is in many countries. There's 54 countries. Almost every country out of name kind of up here had a coup where they took their president out that wasn't treating the people right. After a while. They keep raising them taxes on them people. They keep making it harder for them to advance. Oh, they'll take somebody out. And uh, uh, I want to say, if you look at Burkino Fossil right now, ever since he did that, this dude has put all, he said, you know what? All the money that I was, that the president houses were getting, he fired all of them, got new people in. He only get 10% of the money. He put all the money into the agriculture, fixing up the poverty areas. He said, I'm going to make my country good, and I'm going to put the rest into weapons. He said, because any country in Africa that starts to actually get independent, he said, they're going to come after me like Marcus Garvey. He said, like the he said like the great prophet Thomas. They had a man. Sankara. Yeah. Thomas Sankara. He said, man, he said, the victory does not come from heaven alone. He said, if we pray for it, we got to execute it. That part. He said, we have to implement it. And he said, diligent. He said, we cannot have no sympathy for the house Negroes or traitors anymore. He said, that's what stops Africa is they know how to get to the corrupt ones and put them in place. He said, well, we put somebody trustworthy and honest in place and we take out the corrupt ones. He said, I kicked out the French and I kicked out the U.S. out of his country. And he went to, and Russia said, I've been wanting to a, the African country that has the galls to stand up to the ECOWAS of the African Union. And he said the United Nations that's trying to take from y'all. Russia just now gave them all the weapons, fighter jets, nuclear power to defend themselves. Nuclear power. Nu- and people don't know. Russia never colonized not a part of Africa. I did not know this until I was over there. Never had a hand in taking nothing. Blew my mind. So that clip, y'all, that uh, Kamal Kambon was talking about, we need an ally with nuclear power. There it is right there. But, you know, Burkina Faso, they have a military. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the people in Kenya oh. that, are, that are revolting. Oh. Why, what do you th- think is the difference between Africans over there and descendants of, of Africans here where we, we don't do what they're doing? Not no more. 60s and 70s. Not no more. What did it? Not no more. And brother Wesley Muhammad said it. He said it's something that they put in the food. But, and mm. it, uh, even oh, back yeah, let's go there, bro. We're cooking with grease now. That was, cooking with grease now. That, that was tame compared to what they're doing in Kenya, right? They, yeah. they they made them they made them change and like step step down for what they implemented. You know yeah, what yeah. Saying? In Kenya, so the difference between them and us, like I said, they will power most most of the country in poverty, right? And they, they poverty not like our poverty. Oh, we could bounce back from poverty. A man go homeless today, he could be on his feet in a month. Yeah. Like that. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh yes. Over there, where you, you don't know if your, your next meal is today. 
or three days later where you you make only about a dollar a day that could feed you for mm -hmm. one day mm -hmm. you raising my taxes I gotta go fetch my water from a borehole okay or a lake or a river I gotta walk seven miles mm -hmm. you raising my taxes where I gotta live and I gotta pay for rent here too oh you there's a consciousness in them that, that says I had enough right let's go change and they will get everybody they will get everybody and that is actually what happened president Ruto over there kept raising the taxes the taxes and they were saying something like two years ago like hey you need to stop we are barely making it they uh Kenya has the largest slum in the world and um it's in uh Nairobi I forget the name it's called but it has over 1 million plus train drives through there Sean Paul lost his phone and so it's in that slum they selling it right now Sean Paul the King you got your slum but anyway <laughs> when they when they kept doing that and they told him we barely living as it is either you change it or we're going to change it they he thought they was joking <laughs> they said he kept turning off the electricity and the running water in a section mm -hmm. and the people that voted for him in the region that they voted for him he kept their power on oh year later revolution <laughs> I, got a, I got a question for, for, for everyone perhaps um true you were speaking to or one of you were speaking to the manner in which they show resistance or revolt mm -hmm. um, and we used to have that spirit here on this continent you know um do you think um that it may be due to the fact that we aren't as good um, we haven't been the best custodians of our history yeah. uh, in this nation in, 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 in regard to our youth. And when I say that, not on an institutional level, but from living room to living room, household to household, yeah. um, oh. I feel oh. like when we have a greater um, sense of our history and our, you know, our standing in, in, in this nation and, and our existence, um, by default, as a child coming up in that household where that is you know, where that information is rich, you have a sense of understanding of not only who you are, but where, where you need to go, how you need to position ourselves. Um, and I, I kind of feel that is apparent here with a lot of us where the history isn't as apparent with our youth. And if any, if there's going to be any level of revolution, it's going to be at the hands of the youth to drive it, right? Obviously, the elders are going to be the council to inspire and provide that guidance but the youth are perhaps the most instrumental with that type of action what, what do y'all think about that uh most definitely over here they did a number on our people so let's 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 dial it back in the 80s when they said first let's take the conversation of god out of school right there anytime we talk about god whether it's nation of islam christian hebrew israelite even those debates we get a chance to learn from each other we get to stockpile information on this eventually all roads lead back to history history historically why are we here how did we get here what was the agenda for us being here what is the agenda now going forward if i can somehow let's do take god out to school i start to change the music from unity in the 70s lust i take the gangster consciousness to make it gangster drug dealing black exploitation flicks black exploitation flicks um we go out there you know we start killing off malcolm x martin luther yahoo movement like we just start shutting down movements left and right we pumping fear we slowly getting fear out there people scared to speak scared to say something people can't even walk down the street Encouragely, you you'll see it in specs in areas instead of it being like a whole like blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks and no more black wall streets no we, we don't want none of that we start messing with the food genetically modifying the food to mess with your genetics genetics is, is what gives you a sense of urgency what to do what to that think, has a lot to do with it. how i should feel in certain moments and situations talk, can you talk real quick about how how food is there compared to, to here? Ooh, see, right now, man, uh, I'm kind of fat compared to how I was in Africa. Go back and watch the videos. It look like this. 
we eating real pure food not no organic no real this is the truth this is straight from the earth to you that's why i tell people go to the market areas where they're selling it right there at the basket it just came off a farm they ain't got no pesticides no nothing on it i ate that for a year after three months all the pain in my body was gone have more energy in every area i fucking hate it here man <laughs> bro bro we can't trust nothing even though i i i had i had tried to eat the mangoes here it tastes like cardboard compared to there man big it fast tastes, it tastes juice juicy and luscious when it's going yep. in your body you literally feel it going in yep to the point i started eating lemons whole like pain i feel so good <laughs> i'm empowered this is well, african said are you crazy that's a lemon yeah <laughs> i uh I experienced that in, when I was in Ethiopia as well. I was yeah. vaccinated with the the most basic stuff, the oranges, the grapes. Um, it was it was hidden entirely different, and I felt uh, like I was tasting a lot of those fruits and and foods for the first time. Yeah, everybody who go to Africa say when you go there, you don't want to come back. And you know, and the food impacts you emotionally, right? You, there's that there's that black lady that's on YouTube. She said whatever is in your gut impacts all the emotions in your body because there's a stem from the brain down to the gut. And if the gut is filled with things that are there's more chemicals, yeah, you, microbiome. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? High fructose corn syrup. We got all this stuff. You know, she said, you take if you eat the real thing, your emotions become like she said, humble. She said, a lot of things don't even rattle you like that no more. The peace that I had when I was in Africa, I felt like, man, I'm li living heaven on earth. This food is a part of it. I know it for a fact. Big facts. You know it for a fact. How my wife was moving. Mm. How the kid, how my daughter was moving. I'm like, this is crazy, man. The water, when I drank the water, it, it felt different. Everything just felt different. Period. Mm. When I, now, I tell somebody, they trying to get the GMO there. When I went to Accra and I went to the mall and they have a grocery store. In the mall, you find this organic gmo high fructose corn syrup you see all the things that they got here i said oh i gotta stay away from the mall for me not here oh dang let me just stay amongst where i'm at let me just keep it cool uh, cape coast hey yo real quick i want to uh, kind of i don't know if i answered your question but um you know with that sense of history i'm looking at this Ashanti proverb that mawala mubaruti put up mm -hmm. it says when you follow in the path of your father you learn to walk like him yeah. Right. And so a lot of us, we don't know our father. But then there's this one. He says, our history is our collective memory. And without it, we are lost. Yeah. Studying our history gives us direction and keeps us anchored. When we are disoriented, we surrender to others directions of where we should be going and others definitions of who we are. It's impossible to obtain our optimal hmm, development if our total memory of self has been erased. Mm -hmm. The erasing of our memory makes us mm -hmm. vulnerable to the oppressor's definition of who and what we are because there's nothing in our memory to debunk what we are told. Our collective amnesia is what maintains our psychological enslavement. And I think that just speaks to everything. A hundred percent. That's heavy. That's heavy. And, and you know what? Why, and that's, that speaks to the revolting, the rebellion. Cause they're closer oh, to their father. Bingo. You know I mean, and they that's can walk in his steps. They do this in generation to generation to generation. For like so when I was, like, it's nothing for them to say. Hey, we need to come together and take it down. I know you don't like me per se, but I will work with you. Let's take out this common uh, enemy, okay? And that's the key, because all the Portuguese <laughs> in the build. That's how they. That's how they got us. Yeah, yeah bingo. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't all like each other. No. No, it said they hated each other. I was reading the dialogue, the diaries. They hated each other, but they said we have a common goal. This uh, this is something we could get there and get a piece of. You can have your piece. I can have my piece. Leave each other alone. Right. <laughs> and, and and over here, when I when 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 I look at the black men, not all, a lot. You can see the power and potential in him, but it's like a lion that's in the cage for a circus. Mm. Man. Who's your tamer? I see that. Oh, I see that. Somebody's taming you like that. Somebody trained you like that. You not in your habitat. And I'm not talking about in, in, in this. I'm not talking about Africa. I'm talking about here and here. 
The bravery is gone. The courage is gone. That part. They are so content with this, this system, how it's feeding them, the indoctrination. Even the women that this system is grooming to them, you content with that? This woman is no, and this ain't a, this ain't a bash to my sisters. It's the same thing to the it's sisters. This is reality, man. This it's is the facts. same thing. You you content with this sister that they groom it to be a whore to say it's okay to get my body to him, 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 and you gotta pay for it. This is what we. This is what our desires are. I go after these companies, these Fortune 500 companies, is after these clothes that make these clothing brands. I mean nothing. They don't care for our people. Hate our people. Remember Tommy Hilfiger? Like <laughs> these people, these emotions don't change. <laughs> this is and this is how I look at a lot of brothers. And it, like I said, I, on my new episode, I talk about it. It's coming. It'll be out in September, late September. I say on there, it's specs and places of love and unity and rebels here. It's just specs over there. Everybody will be on it. Mm. Don't care. It's time. The boy in the slums from the middle class right. <laughs> all the way up to the rich. We need to change. That's what you see what's going on in Kenya now. They went in. To the president stronghold, like you're gonna change it. <laughs> boom, boom. We and know where the, they said we know where your kids go to school at. Damn, we're gonna change this, and he did change it. So let's do the same thing. Let's do the same thing. If we want to, people know it. They do. and for and just and just for the like you know the 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 viewers and everything, you just gotta maybe like watch this episode twice or three times. It, it, Every time somebody comes up with some a new idea or a radical idea that's just foreign to you, just don't, just don't like wave it off no. immediately because if, if you're not open to it, it's never gonna happen. Never. You understand know what I'm saying? Like you, people just can't be coming up with ideas, and, and, and your first response is, "Oh, well, that's not gonna happen." Then, yeah, it's not gonna it's happen, happen, man. Because you already put that you man. Because your words is first. If the thought come into mind. The words come out, then the action must follow. Somehow the words gonna get put on paper. You're gonna have the blueprint it. If you don't, then that means you doubt, you don't got no faith, you ain't got no courage. There's no foundation. <laughs> to be honest, man, in this time, you a weak one. Man, man up, be your strength, be your courage. They are slapping you, slap back. That's what you have to do. How you gonna do it? You stay over here, you gotta fight for something. And, and, and the thing, and the thing, and the thing, the thing is, what we're talking about, what he's talking about, is what is going on in Kenya. It's what is going yeah. on, Burkina Faso, exactly. South Africa. They they slap him back, and they getting what they want. Look, look up. I tell people, oh, matter of fact, El Salvador. Ooh, I don't know if nobody know about El Salvador. His president, their president, fixed their country in one year. Took the gangs out, all the gangs, the M6, our cartels, all that. They took it all out. When he said, one year, I fix my country. He said, when you really want to do something and you ready for the peace, he said, ain't no wise or righteous man going to get peace just by sitting still. He said, there has to be some kind of accountability and responsibility to take action for war. He said, I put a war to get the cartel out so my citizens can live in peace. He said, because he said before. He said, it ever got like this. We was a peaceful people, happy people, loving. He said, I want the joy back in my country. And he did it within a year. He said, I don't need America coming over here. He didn't help me out. Then he said, you ain't going to help me out now. Now that we good, stay away. He hey, said, I, got a, I got a question. I got a question for you. Uh, I think you gave um, the listeners a good place to start in terms of the approach. If it's their first time um to to take that leap and go over into the continent for whatever reason and essentially your message was be a student first i think that's very important right you need uh the information to make proper adjustments and even to strategize in any sort of economical sense you need yeah. to understand that landscape so being a student first that's important yeah. Beyond that, what, do you, what can you speak to some of the opportunities? And this could be simple or complex. What are some some things that Black Americans have, like either natural inclinations that we do here, we just kind of like take for granted that we could perhaps bring to their societies that would be fruitful, not only for those individuals doing that, but for the locals in that setting and 
are the locals there receptive to that type of thing? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say it just like this from the fast food worker all the way up to the lawyer, to the doctor, to the judge. They say we need all they need all our skills. We need your hospitality skills. Y'all need our mannerisms, how we do business over here. They they any skill, please. They said come, but come with the pure heart. That's the key. You got the skill, take it over there. It can work. They they want it there because they they even said there 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 there's presidents and chiefs saying Africa's not going forward unless our brothers and sisters come back with their skill sets. It's 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 not happening. That it it's just not going to work. Africa's future, the next stage of Africa is with our brothers and sisters. They don't come back, and if that's not successful, Africa's done. Any skill set, do the research. Do the study because you just can't get over there and just think it's gonna work. Just take some time. Do the research. Do the study. Talk to the people where it works at. Will this work here? Will this work here? They will guide you. The, the right people will guide you to where you need to go. That's the beautiful thing about Africa. If you are cool and you friendly, you loving, you righteous, you accepting. Don't just go for everything, but you accepting. And you're making the proper adjustments. I'm not saying get involved in everything that goes on in Africa, but there are some critical adjustments that you need to make if you're going to strive in the land. You've been in Ethiopia, right? You can't just be the same way here all the way in Ethiopia. It's impossible if you're going to stay. Period. Right. Make the adjustments, and you and you, you you take the steps. You might endure some things. Don't not don't no victory come with without trial and error. I don't care what nobody say. There's going to be some ups and downs, but you're going to get the go. You do that, your business will take off. There are many success stories in, in Africa, Ghana, wherever, just because they stuck to it. Mm -hmm. And man, and I am one of them. I did not come back because my funds went short. Not at all. It was just back to handle some uh, personal family business for a will and in inheritance that's been ducked off for 10 years. So I said, it's time to find out if this is really here and if we will. And if we're going to do this, do that, X, Y, Z. That was it. Nah, man. She's just dropping heavy bars, bro. Uh, I think this is dope and it's insightful. I think if uh, Kylon asked the question, that's the question I wanted to ask. And Kylon answered it. You, you answered it. Um, but well, no, I don't, I don't have any more questions, man. Yeah, a lot of people, they feel like, oh. you know, when they go over there, it's strange people in a strange land, but they're very receptive. Yeah. Um, my last question. Um, talk about <laughs> <laughs> talk about the brothers who uh, you know what I'm saying feel like it's a lost cause out here trying to get a wife, and what, what it's like uh -huh. if they go over there, how they should conduct themselves. Please let me touch on this. Oh man. Oh, so for for okay for the brother that don't got a wife, let's start with him first. You have a trouble here. You a hard worker. You are good. You have a good character. You good heart. You good. And I mean that good. And I'm trying to keep it basic. You an upright stand up person. The passport bros. <laughs> that thing is kind of real because there was many people in Ghana that if you go there, you'll get a wife. Take your time. Take your time. Assess. Pick one. Many options gonna be in front of you. Many, but if you on some, if you on some fugazi stuff, you're not about your business. They don't want you. They ain't gonna want you. They're gonna say, "Oh no, I take your money though." <laughs> <laughs> now to the to the person who has a wife. Uh oh, I'm gonna just say this because I've seen this too. Happened to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. To the person that has a wife, you, if you if you if you if you're looking for polygamous relationships. That's where to go. <laughs> it it will be in if they see you a stand up person with your wife, you get with your kids, you move them serious on your business. It's going to be presented to you. Pick right. Make sure that the wife and you y'all all in league with it. Don't do like I seen some people do. Show up with the second woman there, like okay, we starting second. Like come on now, there's a process to everything. You you and the sister didn't, and I I want to speak to that a little bit more. Um. What I have seen is our brothers from America, 
So I'm from the UK, but more from the from the America, man. Some of the hood mentality ways we got to banish. The pimp player ways you're going over here, don't do that. Because you will salt your name throughout the region. Mm. Once your name is salted, business ain't gonna work for you. Um, they're gonna they're gonna try to scam you every time because they feel like you you don't belong here. You brought more poison and uh the things that we was trying to do away with over here, the toxicity, you brought it over there. You got American and, shit. And I and I seen um brothers uh going over there just sleeping with every woman they could, prostitutes too. Like, why would you do that? You know, because they feel like, oh, I got the power to. I could do this now. I couldn't do this over there. I could do it here. Yeah, well, why are you doing over here that's going to cost you your name? And over there, your name matters. See, over here, you can skate on evil. See, you, you, you skate all day. You can hide behind money. You can hide behind your social media. Over there, it doesn't work. It really doesn't. And they'll call you out. Keep doing it. They'll get together and get you. Like I said, this, this stage of revolt on that. Hmm. And I've seen it. Mm. I've seen it. And I just told I told one individual, I was like, yo, man, yo, like, like who you are did not change when you got over here. But who you are should have been changing before you got over here. How did you look at this? There's two ways to look at this. Um, there's an opportunity and it could go two ways. Did you look at this a ways to advance in peace, love, and unity? Or did you look as a man? I could do deception over here. I could be the pimp, I could be the player. I get I get extort and scam people over here too, cause uh, we do got Americans that go over there and do that. That's that white man inside the black man. You can't uh, the white man inside yourself yeah, going over there American. trying to colonize shit like a damn colonizer. Yeah, and, and, and you know, this, and um, European. this time um, when I go back, um, I'm actually gonna shed more light on that on my platform because I didn't really have too many problems with the Ghanaians. Actually, hardly any. I had more problems with our brothers and sisters over there scamming people. From America, from America, and we're not talking about just no hood dude because ain't who, who I don't know too many hood dudes going to Africa. I'm talking about conscious people, wow, people that's woke like me and you. Like, hold on, first off, you spiritually impeded on somebody's path that you know what's right and wrong, what's righteous and what's wicked, solutions and pollution, and you choose to knowingly do pollution somehow. You haven't took in the time to really heal yourself up to be done with that, and you come over here and do that. I don't have no respect for you. How long you been in what you what you claim? Oh no, 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 no. You 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 more dangerous than the colonizer. You more dangerous. You more dangerous than colonizer. He only his intent is only pure evil. He don't know himself, but you know who you are. You know. You know. Indeed, man. Well, if y'all ain't got anything else, we can go ahead and wrap it up, man. Yeah. <laughs> My God, man. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, thanks for joining us, bro. Uh, a lot of yeah, useful man. information. I know a lot of people are intrigued and interested in the continent of Africa. So more there's 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 never enough content um, yeah. for that particular topic to get us back there so that we can bridge those gaps, um, tear down some of those misconceptions on both sides and put you know um our standing here and there on the continent um, yeah in, in its proper place so i think we are key to the equation um black <laughs> americans considering um our history here our access to resources and information um yeah. and just kind of the like on a cultural level how we tend to kick things off and it becomes global um so if we were to mix that with the resources there and the mentality that is closer to our, our root, and we, you know, we get we get a hold of that, man, it, that would be extremely powerful. So um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think giving people the assurance that um, that type of energy is welcome is what is needed that that needs to be like amplified that that oh, yeah. particular message to motivate people to make that um that trip because i was extremely um inspired when i landed on the continent yeah um, just, just soaking it in it did something to my spirit i couldn't believe i was there um and i don't even really know how to articulate what i got from my particular trip i'm definitely looking forward to the next one and it's a huge continent, right? That's the other yeah. thing. We 
we it's tend to, we tend to talk about it in a singular sense like it's just one i mean it's one place but it's not right it's so diverse there's so many different nation uh nations and cultures and opportunities so um I, I'm, I'm glad to have this conversation with you bro um, looking forward to checking out your channel and everything that you got going on and everything that you uh you know putting down in terms of information educating us that's much appreciated bro thank you yes sir we'll share we'll share i want to thank you as well bro very insightful drop heavy jewels man and uh i already subscribed so yeah we're definitely appreciate gonna have you back appreciate. again too bro appreciate and on that note most probably are unified and passionate love equity growth ancestry cooperation and you yes. peace peace